Okay, so to remind you where we ended last lecture, in the last lecture, we were talking about uh, having a Gibbs free energy curve So Gibbs and as a function of composition. So this is the mole fraction of B. And you've got a free energy curve that say looks like this. And if we have some particular value of mole fraction, we go up and that allows us to identify the identify the chemical potentials by drawing a tangent line from the Gibbs free energy. And this gives us the chemical potential of B and the chemical potential of A. <clears throat> And this is uh, for that, oops, this is for that particular composition. So as you change the composition, the chemical potentials change. So this is a graphical interpretation and in this graphical interpretation, we don't have to uh, rely on the analytical solution. Now, the analytical solution still holds if you're in the special cases, right? So this is in general, uh, case and in the special solutions, of the ideal and regular mixing. So ideal is entropy only. And the regular is entropy Py plus enthalpy which the enthalpy is nearest neighbor only. Then we can get an expression for the uh, chemical potentials GA plus omega one minus A squared plus RT natural A like this. So the chemical potential of A is written in terms of the Gibbs free energy of the A species uh, in isolation and in terms of the uh, this RT, which is the entropic, uh, the logarithm, which is the entropic contribution and this omega which is the energetics of uh, energetics of nearest neighbor interactions. We're getting closer now to being able to talk about multi-component phase diagrams. And in today's lecture, I want to uh, take a step closer by talking about the Gibbs phase rule. So before we do that, let's let's uh, 
briefly review uh, phase diagrams in you know, the most simple sense. The phase diagrams that you probably remember from MSC 201 have something such as temperature or one of your non uh, compositional dependent variables. You have your composition dependent variable, the mole fraction of species B, and then you'll have a map. And in your map, you basically have, again, the simplest phase diagram is going to be some liquid, some solid in we're calling it the alpha phase, and a region of alpha plus liquid. You got a two-phase region. So at a given temperature and a given composition, You can identify where you are on the map. From that, you have a tie line. You draw across the region of the phase diagram you're occupying. In this case, I chose a two-phase region because that's consistent with what I want to, uh, to show you. You drop verticals. From those, and then you're able to uh, take this and read the phase composition. So this is this is the mole fraction of B in the liquid, and this is the mole fraction of B in the solid. And then we can talk about the relative uh, phase fraction by using what we call the inverse lever law. And basically you're saying the fraction of alpha is this length, call this uh, x, divided by the total length of the lever, y. And the phase fraction of liquid is b, this region, z over y, which is also one minus the phase fraction of alpha. And what we're going to see in the near future is that when we're talking about a multi-phase multi-component system, what we're actually talking about is a series of Gibbs free energy curves. This is at t equals, you know, whatever this is, call this a some t star. You have g alpha, I should, uh, Sorry, let me draw it this way. G liquid, G alpha, XB. And when we're creating these, then each of these gives free energy curves can be written out in terms of their enthalpies and entropies. But in today's lecture, what I want to talk about is I want to talk about 
the conditions for equilibrium and how we, well, what we call the degrees of freedom associated with these uh, conditions for equilibrium. And this is going to be, give us the we call the Gibbs phase rule. Now, the Gibbs phase rule, when you see it here, you're going to think is trivial. And in the case of a binary system, it, it kind of is. But as we get up to uh, ternary and quaternary systems, you'll, you'll see it really is not trivial, and it actually has a, a lot of meaning. But let's, let's go from there. Uh, so for now, assumptions. One, we're going to assume the system's in equilibrium, and we want to talk about what are the conditions for those. Right, because if we're talking about a phase diagram, again, everything in our phase diagrams are equilibrium. And two, uh, no interfaces. Right, so a real system, a real system, you're going to have, you know, our solid, for example, that nucleates in a liquid, and all through that, you're going to have the solid liquid interface. So you have a solid liquid interface energy. Uh, but here, I want you to think of the system as having alpha and liquid and having no surface energy. OK. So what are the conditions for equilibrium? Well, one, we know that the different phases, in this case, well, I drew liquid, so let's call it liquid here. The temperatures have to be equal. So we don't have any thermal gradients across the system. Pressures have to be equal. Chemical potentials have to be equal. Not just the chemical potentials, but the chemical potentials for each of the species present. And that's important because if we have a gradient in the chemical potential, then we have mass diffusion. So let's express Gibbs phase rule now in writing. And let me, uh, I'll switch to a new page here. The Gibbs phase rule is simply that the number of degrees of freedom and we'll define that in a little bit here is equal to the number of variables right the number of things that can be varied minus the number of equations necessary for equilibrium. And that kind of makes sense, right? Uh, because if there are more things that can be varied, then there are conditions for equilibrium, then that means that not all the variables are going to be locked down and defined, right? So let's uh, select some notation to use. So C, 
this is going to be the, the chemical species present. Or chemical components. And I'll just use I, J, K, L, lowercase English units for that. P are the phases present. And I'll use alpha, beta, gamma. I'll use lowercase Greek letters for that. So counting the number of variables. We have the um, we have the mole fraction of species one in alpha, species two in alpha, species three in alpha, dot dot dot, up to C total number of species in alpha. Excuse me. One in beta, two in beta, dot dot dot, dot dot dot, x one in the p phase. We're saying there's p phases in total. Two in the p phase, x c p. So we have p times c compositional variables. And then we have the temperature of the alpha phase, the temperature of the beta phase, the temperature of the gamma, the temperature of the P phases. So we have P temperature phases, the pressure, alpha pressure, oops, pressure of the beta, dot, 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 pressure P, P, pressure phases. So this gives us PC plus 2P or uh, let's say PC plus uh, NP is equal to PC plus N where N two, these are non-compositional variables. Now let's count up the number of equations. So starting out with setting the uh, temperature equal T alpha is equal to T beta is equal to T gamma is equal to dot 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 is equal to T P for the P phases. So that gives us P minus one equations. Same thing for the pressure. And then there's going to be a the compositional variables mu one alpha is equal to mu one beta is equal to dot 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 is equal to mu one p mu two alpha is equal to mu two beta is equal to dot 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 is equal to mu two p dot 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 mu c for the we have c components alpha is equal to mu c beta is equal to dot 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 mu c p so 
So we have C times P minus one equation. And it's worth pointing out here, we have two of these, but these are gonna be N times P minus one equation where we had uh, temperature and pressure as our non-compositional variables. And here, that's where that N comes from. Okay. And we have, <clears throat> excuse me, we have one more set of equations. And this has to do with uh, conservation of mass because we know that X1 alpha plus X2 alpha plus X3 alpha plus dot, dot, dot plus XC alpha is equal to one, right? By definition. And the same is true for X1 beta plus X2 beta plus, plus XC beta is equal to one up to x1 p plus x2 p plus plus x c p is equal to one. So that gives us p equation. So this gives us n plus c times P minus one plus P equations. So going back to our expression, we have the degrees of freedom are equal to P C plus N. So that's there, minus N plus C, P minus one plus P. And with a little bit of algebra, this becomes F is equal to C plus N minus P. Okay, so let's look at how this is applied. And again, when you first see this is gonna be trivial and you'll see later in this course that it, it is uh, actually fairly important as we get to higher compositional systems. So let's begin with uh, a single component system. Okay, and phase diagram we've worked with in the past has been a pressure temperature phase diagram in which we'll have a region of solid, a region of liquid, and a region of vapor. So, Let's first pick anywhere in a single phase region. So let's pick, you know, here. If we're here, we have uh, N equals two, pressure and temperature, C equals one, because it's a single component system, which gives us F is equal to C plus N minus, well, P. In this case, P equals one because we're in this uh, phase field, which gives us 
f is equal to 1 plus 2 minus 1 is equal to 2, which means we have two degrees of freedom. And this brings us to what does it mean by degree of freedom? And one way that is explained is that you can move, you can vary any two variables and the system remains unchanged. And I personally find that definition difficult. And, and the reason is, is you say, well, which variable do we move and which variable do we keep fixed? And there's options in that. The way that I prefer to specify the degrees of freedom is F is equal to the number of variables we must define to specify the system. And you'll see what I mean by that as we go on. Uh, but in this case, if you're living in this single phase region, kind of here, if you want to specify the system and its exact behavior and exact properties, you have to specify both the temperature and the pressure. Okay, so now let's pick a two phase point. So let's pick, see, right there on that line. So if you're right on that line, now F is equal to C plus N minus P, which gives us one plus uh, two minus two is equal to one. So this means, one exactly one variable must be defined and and that's because whoops that's because at this point you're on a line so if i give you the temperature, then that tells you exactly what the pressure is. So the pressure and temperature are now coupled. And you can move anywhere you want to on this line, but you're still confined to that one-dimensional surface. And any place that you're, you give the temperature, you necessarily are simultaneously defining the pressure or vice versa. If you are given the pressure, you're now defining the temperature. Okay, last point. Let's pick the triple point. So at the triple point, at the triple point, at the triple point, F is equal to C plus N minus P is equal to one plus two minus three is equal to zero, which means there are no degrees of freedom and you don't need to specify any particular, uh, any particular variable because it's defined by the thermodynamics of the system. And you have to be here.
this also tells you you can't have a any point with you know four or five phases right you can only have three phases present in a single component system so let's let's move to a binary system the binary system would be a little bit illustrative and because when we have our binary phase diagrams like this liquid alpha plus liquid alpha we have pressure is constant now n is equal to one c is equal to two and we'll we'll go back and you'll you'll see how modifying uh pressure also is 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 a uh, something you can visualize but for now let's just work from here okay so let's pick uh one of the single phase regions let's pick there or let's pick here right let's pick the the lower so if i'm there now p is equal to one which means f is equal to n plus c minus p is equal to three minus one is equal to two so again i've got the mole fraction and the temperature and I have to define both the composition and the temperature if I want to uh, specify the system. Going to a two phase region here. Now, P equals two, so F is equal to three minus two is equal to one. So what this means is it means that if I specify one element, for example, let's say I, I, I specify the composition and you, you have a picture of the system, All right, so you get your picture. Alpha, alpha, alpha liquid. And you have your composition. Then the temperature is automatically defined. And that's because you're looking at the system. The system has the phase fraction, right? which means that the only place along this line of composition that can have this phase fraction is right there, which means it defines the temperature. And I think that this part is something that students oftentimes find confusing because you see this and you think, well, you know, why can't I still move anywhere here or here? And the reason is that you also have the physical system that you're looking at. So you're looking at the system and you say, okay, if I'm looking at the system, how many variables do I need to 
define to specify that because for example i can have i can have uh any let, let, let's say that i can vary both temperature and pressure right well i can get the same phase fraction i can get the same physical system by moving you know anywhere along here right i, I could pick a, a composition here and let's see this is this is about 50 50 right well if i wanted to pick something 50 50 this point here that's about 50 50 right and uh, what else about 50 50? I picked here. That's about 50 50. So if I pick this composition and this temperature, I had the same physically looking system, right? The same phase fraction. And if I picked here and here, so basically, let me. Zoom in here. If I wanted to have 50% alpha, I could pick anywhere along that line. And again, we're coming down to this idea of limiting ourselves to a line. So it's a one dimensional system, but that's being limited by the existence of the liquidus and solidus lines. So to kind of finish up this discussion, we can say, what if P is not constant? Well, if pressure is not constant, then this phase diagram is no longer a phase diagram like that slice, but it becomes a higher dimensional phase diagram, which we can represent temperature and composition and pressure. So this is going to be uh, B and A, and you know. Draw this up. We'll have some alpha plus liquid, alpha liquid. And as we change the pressure, we're changing this uh, lens is shifting. So now we have a surface. So let's say we pick, uh, well, our expression for the Gibbs stage rule becomes F is equal to C plus N minus P is equal to four minus P. So let's say that we pick somewhere inside of that lens, say P equals two. Well, when P is equal to two, then F is equal to two. So we have two degrees of freedom. So we can specify two, exactly two variables. to define the system. Or I should say, if you've got a picture of the system, you need to specify two variables to lock it into this phase diagram. So you were now on a surface. So in here, you know, for example, if we have the uh, composition, that gives us say some, one of these lenses that we have and then we have the temperature, then that automatically specifies what the composition is. And in principle, that also means that if I have a picture of the system, 
So I know the phase fraction of alpha and the phase fraction of liquid. Then somewhere in here, there is a surface with F alpha and F liquid. And I can move anywhere on that surface because I have two degrees of freedom. So hopefully this gives you some insight into how moving to higher dimensional systems, the Gibbs phase rule becomes more important. And you'll see this more clearly when we get to the Terranary phase diagrams.